in a minute, sorry. Okay, so I'm Harriet Bograd and I'm president of Kulanu and I'm delighted to welcome you all to this, to this celebration of our new video and our matching gift challenge. As most of you know, Kulanu supports isolated, emerging and returning Jewish communities around the globe. And we do it, um, well, the video will tell you how we do it in a minute. <clears throat> We, um, I was gonna say, we're, we're, we're particularly excited that last, last winter we had a matching gift challenge and we spoke to some of our donors who said, why do you only do this in the winter? We like to give it the spring and we want our gifts matched too. So we um, were lucky enough to find another donor who was willing to match up to $20,000. And so we offered the opportunity for matching gifts in the spring as well as the end of the year. Um, and so uh, we've already, since we announced it about a week ago, have raised very close to five, or through two dollars short of $5,000 so far. And uh, we're looking to all of you to help spread the word and give if you can, um, so that we can um, get as, you know, as much of that $20,000 match as we can. <clears throat> I'm delighted to introduce you to Bonita Nathan Sussman, a volunteer with Kulano and our first vice president. She's a graduate of Yeshiva University Stern College, has a master's degree from Columbia University and the Jewish Theological Seminary. She's on the editorial staff of the Kulano Magazine and she's Kulano board liaison for the Kulano academic cohort, which she, um, she, she, she masterminded creating it, and she's also coordinator of our work with new communities. The photographs and videos of her travels have been published and exhibited. Bonnie, take it away. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for coming. We're very excited to launch our new video. It's been about a year in the making. Uh, it was a complicated process. Uh, we took videos, we tried to incorporate all of our communities. Uh, we are, Kulanu is now in 33 uh, countries worldwide. That's a big movement. And in each uh, country, there could be several groups. So like in Nigeria, like in lots of communities in Latin America. So, and we have, so I'm here to actually thank you for coming and thank the photographers from all over the world that donated pictures and videos. And I know that Chaya Weinstein, we use some of her pictures and videos in this. Um, and we're hoping after we show this to, um, oh, and Shep, I believe, has some pictures that we used. Um, and I'm hoping at the end for you to tell me if you liked it, tell me what you think about the video. I want to thank Harriet, and I want to thank Molly, and I want to thank our technical person who put it all together after many edits, David Hillebrand, who's in California and unfortunately not able to be with us today. And um, it, was a, it was an interesting process to put it together. Um, and we hope that it makes very clear what this movement, this international worldwide movement is about and how we contribute to that, um, to this whole new historical trend. Um, everybody, I think we can now start. Kulanu supports isolated, emerging, and returning Jewish communities around the globe. But how exactly do we do this? In many different and specific ways. How have we been able to achieve so much since our founding in 1994? By immersing ourselves. Together with our partner communities. Partners. Partners. It takes partners. By connecting and enlisting other like-minded organizations to join our efforts and through the strength of our team, our volunteers, and those who around the world support this incredibly important work. 
As the word kulanu in Hebrew means all of us, all of us, or of us, it's all of us. It truly is up to all of us to lift up our brothers and sisters in remote communities who yearn for their heritage, but where being Jewish is even more challenging or forgotten. It is about wanting to change their lives fundamentally and take on a new system of life and a new system of belief and a new system of practice. And they are passionate about it. <laughs> Today's world allows even more ways to connect, to respond to those who seek our help to strengthen their Jewish identity. And when Jews connect, whether in person or virtually, all our lives are enriched and the Jewish people are strengthened. Together we are stronger, stronger, stronger. united through our faith. I was searching and seeking and um, I have tried to, I have tried many religion uh, and I was never satisfied. And finally, have seen that uh, Judaism is the ideal religion. Kulana reaches communities by assisting with Shabbat and prayer services and the celebration of Jewish holidays. By presenting communities with our first Torah. With teachers, through conversions and Jewish weddings. By providing Jewish ritual items. Through education, advocacy, and community development. In these important ways, we are able to engage, include, and lift up our Jewish communities in all corners of the world. Kulanu continues to travel the world, where and when possible, to assist Jewish communities who are rediscovering their roots or have chosen Judaism. We provide books and ritual items to support Shabbat and prayer services and the celebration of Jewish holidays. And it's an incredibly rewarding give and take. Simultaneously learning and being exposed to the unique ways communities have fused their local culture with Jewish traditions. When Kulano facilitates the gifting of a Torah, the long line from Moses on Mount Sinai extends further through today and across the world. The communities celebrate the cornerstone of their laws and traditions and their unification with Jews around the world through the words of Torah. We are so excited to be able to donate this Torah to the Comunidad Sefardita Ortodoxa de Honduras, which is in San Pedro Sula in Honduras. We celebrate today as Klal Yisrael, Michael Genie bringing us together, and we have with us the Honorable Consuls from Honduras, as well as representation the Consul from Israel, and we have Senor Gonzalez who's here on behalf of the community of Honduras, which is embracing Torah. May Hashem bless you and your kehila. As a catalyst to connection, Kulano fosters online learning through the giving of computers and smartphones and the underwriting of internet service provided through Kulano's technology fund. This support allows communities to engage with teachers and other communities to further their Jewish education. To nurture Jewish teachings and traditions, Kulano also sends in-person teachers overseas. While also arranging for leaders of partner communities to travel to the U.S. and Israel to study. They bring back to their local communities and enhance knowledge and new relationships. Nothing is more spiritually fulfilling than when Kulana arranges rabbis to perform local conversions when requested. Soy una de las 114 personas que hicieron conversión en Nicaragua y actualmente soy el presidente is stuck. Molly, did you see that the video on mine, the yeah. video has been stuck and somebody else said theirs is also. Okay. Can we, I, it, it got stuck, I got stuck when we got to the um, women dancing in Uganda. Yes, me too. I also. <laughs> I also. I also. Do you have a copy on your home computer, Molly, or were you using that one? Not me. 
Rosalind, you were getting the whole vid the video as well as the audio? Yep. Yep. Maybe Toronto has special time. <laughs> <laughs> Is it working for you, Bonnie, also? Oh, yeah. That worked. We're stuck yeah. here in Toronto, too. Yeah, I was stuck. Oh, I'm I, stuck in Toronto, too. I'm not stuck in Toronto. I wasn't stuck. Molly, were you getting the whole video? I was getting the whole video, yes. And I wasn't, not in Oregon, so. But hopefully. Isn't that weird? Molly, were you using YouTube or were you doing it from your home? I'm, I was using YouTube because that's how I usually do it. But I can. Can you go back to the women in, do you know where that is? <laughs> when it's talking about local culture, you know, adapting Judaism to local culture. And it's got women dancing at a festival, a music and dance festival in Uganda. Uh, it's on your home computer. Is this the screen where? Yep. Yeah, it's right there. It froze. Yeah. That's okay. It. So we're about halfway through. Hopefully, we can start here and join back together. Okay. I'm going to hit play. Let's That's see. weird, though, that it was for some people and not others. When Kulano facilitates the gifting of a Torah, the long line for Moses on Mount Sinai extends further through today and across the world. The communities celebrate the cornerstone of their laws and traditions and their unification with Jews around the world through the words of Torah. We are so excited to be able to donate this Torah to the Comunidad Sefardita Ortodoxa de Honduras, which is in San Pedro Sula in Honduras. We celebrate today as Klal Yisrael, Michael Genie bringing us together, and we have with us the Honorable Consuls from Honduras, as well as representation the Consul from Israel. And we have Senor Gonzalez, who's here on behalf of the community of Honduras, which is embracing Torah. May Hashem bless you and your Kehila. As a catalyst to connection, Kulano fosters online learning through the giving of computers and smartphones and the underwriting of internet service provided through Kulana's technology fund. This support allows communities to engage with teachers and other communities to further their Jewish education. To nurture Jewish teachings and traditions, Kulano also sends in-person teachers overseas. While also arranging for leaders of partner communities to travel to the U.S. and Israel to study. They bring back to their local communities and enhance knowledge and new relationships. Nothing is more spiritually fulfilling than when Kulana arranges rabbis to perform local conversions when requested. Soy una de las 114 personas que hicieron conversión en Nicaragua y actualmente soy el presidente de la comunidad judía sefardí lógicamente venimos de familias que fueron forzadas a no guardar la Torah. I have the best job because I see the looks on these ladies faces when they come out of the mikvah. That's the best job. These are often followed with the renewing of vows through Jewish weddings in the community. Bonds are strengthened, the links through the generations enhanced, and the celebrations are tremendous, overflowing with joy. While connecting through the internet opens eyes wide, holding ritual items in their own hands brings Judaism further into homes in a tangible way. With gifts of Mizzot on doorposts, Shabbat candles on tables, prayer books in hands, tipot on heads, talit and tefillin, shofars and glowing menorahs, Judaism burns ever brighter. Kulano also often assists communities with education, nutrition, economic development, and infrastructure. Through all our efforts,
Arts Kulanu continues our work through the generous support of donors and the dedication of staff, volunteers, and community leaders around the world. Together with all of us, we will continue to engage, inspire, and unite isolated, returning, and emerging Jewish communities around the globe for years to come. Thank you, Kulanu. Okay, so um, one of the things I forgot to mention, this is available for you to watch and share. And the more people that watch it and share it, the better we get out our um, the better we get out our message. Anybody have any comments about the film? Um, well, uh, this is Tzvi Zohar speaking. I think it, it's, it's a very nice film. And I personally think that there are a lot of people who may be seeing these videos and they don't have any perspective about this worldwide movement in decades of people returning or joining or becoming Jewish and a perspective on that as a preliminary would be very uh, enriching. Uh, thank you. And that's part of our mission is to get the word out. I mean, I always say at this point that Herzl had a problem getting the message out. In the beginning, he was flawed. People said, this is ridiculous, right? And in certain circles, this whole movement is not being watched or noticed. However, saying that, I think time will let us win, just like Herzl in a long-term one. And this is an important historical trend. Um, it's in, you know, it's really happening and it's really real. And any help that you could have getting us into publications, television programs, uh, magazine articles, any help around that, we would love to work with you. Someone else, Chef? I thought it was amazing. I loved it. And, um... It's also touching because I, I, I saw you know, the community in Madagascar and stuff and the Uganda. I really loved it. It was excellent. Bonnie did a great job. Whoever did it did a great job. Thank really you. Really wonderful. I love it. Thank you. Anybody else? I just want to say that Bonnie thanked everyone else, but, we, but didn't thank herself. And she played a major role in this as well. Thank you. Anybody else with comments? If not. Yes, Andrea. Uh, Andrea. Yeah. Andrea. You're, you're on mute. Am I unmuted? Yes. Okay, sorry. Um, from my end, it was hard to see. It was The quality was really poor. I'm hoping it's very clear when you actually see the original. Yeah. Um, it's, Harriet knows we're trying to find projects for Kulanu Canada and really rely very heavily on Kulanu in the US to guide us. So maybe it's possible for us to use this as a way of telling the whole Kulanu story because we're so much smaller. If you're comfortable with that, and we could add an introduction that Kulanu Canada is a partner in some projects, perhaps we could promote this here as well. We'd love to, you know what, Molly, can you post the link for people to copy it so that they can see it, uh, a more completed, perfected version if they had a corrupted version of it here? That would be very helpful, thank you. Okay. I was thinking um, the same thing, Andrea. Okay. Any else? I can just say that it's right on the homepage. It's, it's right on the homepage of our website to view on YouTube. If you wanted to have an original copy to show, you know, there's when you when you show the YouTube version over Zoom, it apparently gets gets um, worse. So that we could we could work out with people getting them the original actual film. But, but it's right, a perfectly clear, if you're watching from home, a perfectly clear copy is right on our homepage, kulana.org. Okay, anybody else with any comments? I see that there were chat comments, which I haven't watched. I haven't looked at. Does any, um, 
I think the film is beautiful, informative, and moving. It seems blurry. Especially important is to get this information to the Israeli media. Please help with that. The film is absolutely superb. Mazel tov kulanu. And for all your work. Thank you, Yehuda, Molly. Thank you for the link. I think I've covered all the comments that I see. Um, Harriet, would okay. you like to take over the show? Okay, so my next job is um, to introduce Judy Kloper, our magazine editor, because we're going to have a, a, a piece of this meeting to hear about our new magazine and, and about the magazine in general. Um, Kulana is a Kulana, Judy Kloper is a Kulana board member and editor of the magazine. She was born and raised in near Boston and graduated from Oregon State University with degrees in child development and family studies and in home economics and health education. Judy has five children, three from India, one from China and one birth child, as well as two beautiful grandchildren. As an international child welfare specialist, Judy worked for many years finding families for children with special needs from India. Judy has served on many boards in Oregon and in her own home community of Corvallis, Oregon, her former home community of Corvallis, she's now living in Portland and including her congregation in Bay Am, and still maintains her connection though she's moved to Portland. Her volunteer work for nonprofits has included editing and proofreading new newsletters, websites, and blogs, assisting in immigrant, immigrant programs, and traveling overseas to teach English. She's been traveling to India for 34 years. Her trips to India in 12, I'm gonna, I'm gonna summarize some of this, she, she's traveled, on behalf of Kulana to India and to Nicaragua and spent time living in both places. Um, and um, we're so glad that she's the editor of the Kulana magazine. Judy. Yep. Thank you. Hi, everybody. So um, I'm, I, uh, I'm also speaking on behalf of our magazine layout person, who is Lisa Yagoda. And Lisa does a fabulous job with the magazine, and she's not able to be with us right now. So um, I want to um, just let you know, you already know this, but um, just to reiterate that the Kulanu magazine is a, it's a historical documentation of and a sharing about Kulanu and our work around the world and the movement in Jewish history for inclusivity and diversity. But just as important, this magazine is an opportunity for our partner communities to learn about each other and to have their voices heard. And by the way, our magazine dates back to 1993. I think all of those uh, copies are on our website under resources. So I wanted to just real quick go over what it takes to make this magazine. And um, one of the, uh, it's just step by step, and there's a lot of steps I didn't put in here, but the first thing we do um, after the magazine, like after this issue goes out, within a few weeks, we're gonna have a meeting with our editorial team to talk about possible upcoming topics. And we're always looking to hear from other people who aren't on our team, if you have an idea about something to explore or write about, or if you'd like to write about it, we're interested. We, we talk about these possible topics, we email or speak with possible authors, and then we bug them to get their articles and photos in. And, and sometimes we really do have to keep on people to get those articles and photos into us in a timely manner. And then we have an editorial team that we read and we edit and we sometimes have to do extra research for, for certain articles. It goes between two or three editors and sometimes a lot more edits. So I might edit it and um, Molly might edit it after that. And maybe Barbara Vinnick will edit and we each catch things that the other might've missed. And the other thing that has to be done is Lisa does this, she edits the photos and editing them to make them printable is a very important and time consuming step. What might look good on, on the website when you're on the internet looks great, but it might not print well in the magazine. So it's really important for us to get the best possible photos from the um, people submitting the articles. And then we have to write the captions for the photos and we send it off to Molly or Harriet, make sure everything looks okay to them. 
And one of the other things that people seem to really appreciate that we include in our magazines, we have a map in each issue, a, a global map that shows where the communities that we write about in that particular issue are located. And then in the article, we sometimes will include a little, a little insert of that country and where the community is within that country. Then um, we also have to consider what to put on the back page and what to put on the front cover because we want to grab your attention. So those we have to have photos of high quality, high resolution for that. Lisa and I will then do a final edit. Lisa does the layout. Then we do one more proofread and edit that once it's laid out, we send it off to the printer, we place it online. And sometimes we have to do um, corrections. Once it's online, we find that something has changed or, or we, we notice an error. Maybe there's a run on sentence and we quickly go online and fix that. And we get these mailed out. So the topics that we're interested in, we, have to, we want them, um, they have to do with our partner communities and or our mission. And we want to expand the Jewish world's horizon. So these are the kind of things, any topic that fits under those categories. And if you volunteered with our one of our partner communities, we'd love for you to write about it and incorporate what Kulanu means to you in that process. Um, we're always looking for that. We've published quite a number of articles by people who have volunteered for us or with our partner communities. So really, really, um, would love more ideas. We seem to have um, more ideas coming. And sometimes we get an idea for one issue and we have to put it off for the next issue. It doesn't mean we're not going to print it. This upcoming issue, it's just about to go to the printer, it includes topics. Um, one of them is called Changing the Lives of Deaf Children in Uganda. And uh, we've Kulan has been supporting some schools in Uganda for many years. And this particular one is about the children who are deaf, some from the Abu Yudaya community. And they, they go to the, um, bigger, the larger school that serves children from many different communities in that area, not just the Jewish kids. Another article is previewing or reviewing the films of our partner communities. Um, that are, you know, some of them are on Vimeo, some of them are Amazon uh, Prime has one on Ghana. So um, you'll be able to read about these films. We have a very interesting article this time by Ari um, about make the history of matzah making. And it covers the history, but also within our partner communities too, with some interesting photos. And um, we will, of course, have our large, we might have actually a different map this time, but one that incorporates all our communities. We have an article about um, our legacy uh, program, our legacy donors. We're discussing, we're um, sharing about some of our donors and we'll be asking people to consider becoming a legacy donor. We have two tribute articles coming up in memory of our um, late board member and extraordinary, uh, volunteer extraordinaire Sandy Leader, and of also the Nicaraguan community leader Kurt Priest, who recently passed. So we have some interesting articles coming up about them. And we have our annual list of donors and, of course, our Kulanu notes, which has tidbits in there about various um, goings on within Kulanu itself here in the States and over in the partner communities overseas. So you can look forward to receiving that either online or in the mail. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any any questions or comments for, for Judy? I, I know many of you have received the Kulana magazine for many years, and you might want to share you know, what that's meant to you. Judy does this work as a volunteer. It's amazing. <laughs> you will do it as volunteers, Harriet. <laughs> OK, so how do we get the magazine? You make a donation of any amount, $5, any amount, you get the magazine for a year or two. Okay. 
Plus, plus it's on. Oh, and then it's it's, uh, it's online. And if you're on our mailing list, it'll if you just contact us in any way, just go to kalana.org/contact. You'll you'll get a notice when the magazine is posted online, and you'll get a, a link to the magazine online. And all exactly. the past magazines are at kalana.org/magazines. Uh, and um, Molly showed you that page, but. And I, I want to acknowledge that we have with us Karen and Aaron Primack, or at least we started with Karen and Aaron. Are they both still here? I don't know. But um, and they they were in charge of the magazine from 1993 to 2008. Um, and uh, this is a current issue, the previous issue. Yeah. And and they did an amazing job, and all of their magazines. The other thing we have on our website, which is an is a really helpful tool, is there's a search tool, so that if you if you want if you have a name of someone and you want to know did they ever show up on Kalana's website or on our in our blog or in our magazine, if you just put in someone's name, you can find every reference to that person or that place. Um, you, you, you might be interested in a particular Jewish community, and you just put in the name of the community, and you get everything that's ever appeared about that on, through our search tool. So I now wanna just um, open the conversation if people have questions, have comments about what Kalano has meant to you, or if you have questions about what's going on, um, there are a bunch of um, board members here and others and staff members who can answer your questions. Um, we have here uh, Yehuda, from Tanzania, maybe he wants to say a few words. And we have Bethalzer from Cameroon, maybe they want to say a few words. And Yehuda? Uh, uh, just to, to say that uh, the, the film is absolutely amazing and the work that you are doing is absolutely amazing. Uh, I was reading a message uh, someone uh, put a message in the public about uh, Arab monies, uh, about the Moshia, and uh, absolutely, I agree that that message should be included in the Kulanu magazine because the Moshia is uh, really coming because Kulanu is, is participating in and gathering all the Jews all over the world, uh, something that most of us even don't realize when we use our teklal, uh, our sidur, there is always a prayer in gathering all the Jews around the world and the plan is putting into practice. So I would just like to say, we might be practicing Judaism, but we're not putting into practice, but Kulanu is putting into practice, which I absolutely commend and thank you for the great job you are doing. And thank you. You have to say, Yehuda, the great job we are doing because it's all of us and you're certainly an important part of doing the job. <laughs> One of the things Yehuda does is we have a, a WhatsApp group for leaders of communities in Africa and he invites everybody every week to a class with Rabbi Dr. Ari Greenspan, but Yehuda is the manager of that class and does a very good job on that as well as many other things. Um, thank, I, thank you. This, I, I saw the two comments that I'd like to read about that was just in the chat. One, somebody wrote about, for some people, the ingathering of the Jewish people is a sign of messianic times. And I know that different people believe this and some people don't believe this, but you should be aware that there is this um, support for the notion of um, the ingathering of people, which is part of a prophetic vision. The other thing I saw is this Holly, somebody who I don't know and wrote this wonderful thing. She wants to be involved. So Holly, would you like to click on so we could hear who you are and uh, talk to you? Is Holly still here? I am. I'm sitting outside oh, in a very 
many years ago, Harriet provided my son um, and me when I was, I'm a trauma specialist and I was traveling to Uganda to do some trauma training. And Harriet provided me information about the Abayudaya community, which my son and I visited and brought kosher wine to. My son is a musician. He was in Berkeley College of Music at the time. And while I was doing trauma training, he was teaching music to about 200 former child soldiers. Um, and then we had a wonderful Shabbat in um, this mountaintop village. And when my eyes were closed, I wouldn't have known that I wasn't in New York and, and Shabbos services. Um, however, I, I represent the international- Excuse me, I just want to say, Holly, that we're having a little trouble hearing you. Are you outdoors oh. where it's windy or? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm sorry, I'll go inside. Um, where it's not so windy. I just needed some fresh air because I've been in Zoom meetings um, <laughs> hour after hour. So now I'm inside. Um, I represent the International Council of Nurses at the United Nations. And the United Nations was really established in 1948 um, to encompass organizations as well. And Eleanor Roosevelt, maintain that unless non-governmental organizations were a major part of the UN, it would not succeed. That world leaders would always be uh, focused on their own ambitions, their nationalism for their countries, and they would never be able to accomplish the goals of the UN. Um, we believe that continues to be true. And I hold several elected positions in the civil society sector. And I would love to see Kalanu and other organizations um, attain official recognition and involvement with the UN. The process is a little cumbersome, but it's free. And now that we live in a virtual world, it doesn't require being in New York until COVID um, we would travel to the UN headquarters every week, sometimes three times a week for meetings, but now almost everything is done virtually or hybrid. So I would be glad as a volunteer um, to help assist in that process for Kulanu and other associations. Um, the requirements are not very, very stiff. Um, and the opportunities for public awareness, for um, global connections is, is really wonderful. Thank you so much, Holly. My we'll, pleasure. We'll certainly Please follow up with you. With me. And, and certain things like the, you know, the issue of deaf children in Uganda, there's an, uh, a health committee. I'm the chair of the NGO Committee on Mental Health. There are spirituality, and religious freedom committees. There are NGO committee on aging, which is excellent. There are just many, many opportunities for individuals and organizations to become involved in very meaningful and interesting projects and activities. Holly, if you're not already getting our emails, if you would actually go to kalana.org slash contact. And I, I, I wrote down your email, but if you would just give us a little bit more of your contact information. It would, sure. it would help I, us I stay do, in touch. Yeah, I do get um, I do get the information. Wonderful. Um, okay. Then we'll find I'll you. be glad to. Um, okay. Hi, Weinstein. Are, are you here? Are we, I I would love to hear from you a little bit about what it's been like for you being sort of one of Kulana's favorite photographers oh. since 2004 or 2003. Up to last week or a week or two ago when you took pictures at, at the bat mitzvah of Amuna, um, a Ugandan child who just had a bat mitzvah in New York. Chaya, are you there? She may not be available. Harriet? Yes? Harriet? This is Dan Levitsky from Michigan. Could you possibly get me the email contact for the leader of the Tanzania community. Uh, I think I'm going to be in Arusha in 2023. 
And I, all you have I, to do is go to kulana.org contact and ask for it and we'll send it to you. Okay. I also noticed that we seem to, for obvious reasons, not being doing anything anymore with the uh, Jewish descendants of Kaifeng, uh, probably because of what's happened with the Chinese government, uh, their relationship with Kaifeng. There are two steps to that story. Um, we stopped working in, we, as, as you know, Dan, we, we had a speaker from Kaifeng and we were pretty actively involved around 2010 or 11 or 12, sometime in there. But at the time, there were also two other organizations, one with reform leadership and one with orthodox leadership, um, Shavay Israel and the sino Judaic Institute. They were both also actively working and actually squabbling a bit <laughs> we, um, in, in terms of who was doing what with, with, with Kaifeng. And we, our, our volunteers that were working there found like it was too many people trying to work with the same group at the same time. We were, we were competing for who would get the students to a class because two people would schedule a class at the same time. So we decided to just take our resources elsewhere and, and support the work of both Shave Israel and Sinai Judaic Institute, but not try to compete with them. Yeah, well, I so we on the step back way back then. And then more recently, it's been the government has come in and made things even more difficult. Um, Impossible. They made it. I'm on the board of the Sino Judaic Institute, and we basically uh, can do nothing there. The Chinese government has made it very clear they want no non governmental organizations doing anything with right. the people there. And we don't want to put them at risk. They, they, the government went in and even destroyed all the markers that were there from the Jewish community, where they went to where the synagogue was and where the well was there from the mikveh. They poured cement over it. They took all the signs down. They, they have really shut everything down almost completely, unfortunately. They actually do the same thing in the United Nations in whatever way they can, in the, in the diplomatic community and civil society. Susan Goldberg, did you want to say something out loud? I know you wrote this wonderful message in the, in the chat. If you want to unmute yourself. OK, uh, I just want to follow up with Dan said and others have said about the community in Kaifeng. Uh, some of you may know that my husband and I both um, uh, as scholars of, of Chinese uh, language, literature, art history, et cetera. Uh, when we were last in Yerushalayim in 2019, uh, this person who works with the Kaifeng community um, told us that, and this is the problem, and this must be broadcast to the world. Are there 1,500 Jews in China? The Chinese government, well, everybody hears about the Uyghurs, but the Chinese government has insisted that Jews decide whether they're Han, meaning the majority ethnic group in China, what most people would call Chinese or Han, H-A-N, or, or they can be Muslims. So they're trying to, just following up what Dan said, not only physically destroy the Jewish people, but, uh, but through, literally through any sort of identification with, with the larger Jewish community. Um, this needs time and attention, and please contact me, anybody, that we can do something about this. I don't know how public people feel. I mean, I don't know how different groups like Shave Yisrael or the Sino Judaic Institute or even Kulano feel about making something like this public, but it's it's on a par, even though we're a much smaller group with the Uyghurs trying to be destroyed. The Chinese are trying to destroy the Tibetans. They've told the Tibetans that they have to study their sacred scriptures in Chinese, okay? So, and there's been stories about this in the New York Times, not about the Jews, but about under Xi Jinping, this effort to like, everybody's gonna be Han. In other words, all the different groups in China are supposed to disappear, God forbid. So please, if anybody, Dan, anyone else, if we can join to be more public with all due respect, I, I don't wanna put these people in danger. I, I know we have to be careful, just like we have to be careful about problems with our communities all over the world, but, this is really a serious issue. I mean, I, Dan, you probably know more up-to-date information. Has anybody have any contact with these people, this community now? I is do. There any, is there any? I, do. I just want to say that this, this is a, I'm sorry, this is a recorded session that's going to be online. So that if we're going to have a talk that might put people at risk, I would suggest you take it offline. At this, I mean, we can say that people who are interested, we'll be happy to introduce you to each other, Susan Goldberg 
and Dan Levitsky. And anybody else who wants to be introduced will introduce you. But I think in terms of who's been in contact with whom, we should we should keep that offline. I, I totally agree. I just want, I just really think though that it does need to be made known, to, especially to groups of, like Kulanu, that this is like what Dan is saying. This is you know, uh, uh, it's a it's a genocide. What what else can we call it? When it's like Pharaoh, it's like there's no more Jews. You know, you you know, you can be something else. <laughs> Is there you anything be... written about this that you could send us a link or? No, but I can tell you the name of the person who works okay, with Rabbi right. Israel. I'm I'm not telling you now. I respect the fact that what you just okay. said about okay. not naming names. I'm just saying that I and my husband personally spoke with persons who are work with Shavai Yisrael with the Jewish communities, and this is what the problem is. Okay, thank you, thank you. Chef, your hand is up. Yeah, well, I just wanted to say, I we all know the guy from Shavai Yisrael who's involved with the Chinese Jews, and I, I'm in touch with, you, you know who I'm in touch with, um, and not naming names. And uh, when I write to him about my plans to go to China, he responds immediately. If I ask him anything about the community, he does not respond at all. So these people are in a very difficult situation. And I think it's the opinion of the Sinai Dek Institute Kulanu and uh, Shavei Israel that to make this a big deal like Soviet Jewry would make things probably worse. Um, the state of Israel is very good friends with China. They never bring it up. I don't think, I think the thinking is for most of us is not to stir it up too much because there are, there are there's a tiniest minority in the whole country of China of 1.3 billion people. But uh, I think it's best be, if you have a private per I have a friend I connect with, but again, doesn't like to talk about it. And that's where it is right now. I don't think we can do much. I wanna move on to um, Chaya Weinstein posted a message saying, my mic is not working. So sorry, but it's been a great honor to photograph over the years and I look forward to doing more. It is my favorite cause, and I maintain links to Uganda where I volunteered twice in past years. Um, one of the things Kaya has done in addition to all her wonderful photography is um, she's been a mentor to a young woman um, who she first met when I think the young woman, Hadassah Nakiza was 11 years old. And Hadassah is now, I just graduated from college and is, is working, you know, has been developing her skills as a photographer all these years. Um, I still have Hadassah's first um, roll of film that she did in a digital, a throwaway digital camera when she was 11. Uh, we still have the, the, the pictures she took in that first set of, of pictures. But, but it's these long-term relationships where people make friends, you know, in 2005 and stay friends till 2022 and, and, and follow young people as they grow older. That's been a great joy. I have the same kind of relationship. I have um, Shoshana Nambi I met when she was 14 years old in 2004, when she was taking the younger children out of services during Torah reading to have a, a learning experience. And we were there on a tour and I saw her, her and her friend Sarah Navagala teaching. And now Shoshana is living in my home along with her 13 year old daughter um, who just had a bat mitzvah and Shoshana has just completed her fourth year of rabbinical school at Hebrew Union College, um, is back in Uganda for the summer. But being able to follow her journey for all these many years and feel like a, you know, a second mother to her has been a great joy. And, and I, there, there are many stories like that in, I, I'm in this group that, that's here collected and, and you know, throughout the Kalano world of, of, of friendships that have, have lasted for years and they're so, so mutually enriching, um, you know. Yeah. I'd like to follow up on that because this whole, your whole idea of individual friendships and caring relationships from year to year is very important. And I think should be expanded, in fact, into community relationships. There was an interesting thing that happened in Worcester, Massachusetts. A conservative synagogue in Worcester, Massachusetts hosted Yosef Kibita, who has been having his difficulties in trying to find a way to become an Israeli citizen. Um, and after he spoke, 
they invited him to become an honorary member of the synagogue. And maybe we ought to consider things like this, that we want to be, at, just like, just like uh, uh, Shoshana's daughter was, a, was bat mitzvah at a synagogue in New York City, maybe we ought to try to make these things more formal so that we can say that we are talking to Jewish communities that are this movement that you, uh, that, that, that uh, uh, Benita had, had, um, had, had uh, mentioned. So I wanna say I'm, I'm the person who, who deals with lots of communities. Um, I'm one of the people that deals with more than one community. And I don't so much have personal relationships with the people in the communities. Um, my goal is to get them where they want to be. Um, I know I'm now working with two communities in Pakistan of all places. And uh, I'm hoping to visit though, people are discouraging me uh, to visit in October. There's like 600 people. And I asked them like, what do they need and what do they want? And uh, they're asking for a Torah home or they're, they want the newest group asked for online Zoom classes. So we hooked them up with online Zoom classes. And so um, you, the, I had an aha moment, uh, I don't know, a few years ago, that the same problems of establishing a Jewish community in America, like recruiting new members, who serves the Kiddush, how do we pay for it? How, how, um, what kind of education do we give our children? These are the same questions that these communities around the world are facing. And um, be, while these individual relationships are very important and they are life altering for everyone, um, uh, I, my personal goal is to like, help establish communities and give them the infrastructure and tools they need to function as a group. Being fully aware that these communities may dissolve, like synagogues emerging in America all the time. They're closing up, they're giving us their safer Torahs. That's another thing. You know of a community that's, um, that has a Torahs hidden in their Geniza and their uh, uh, places where they would bury information, we would love those Torahs. Uh, we distribute them around the world. And um, so, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of, I think there's many, many different sides to the work that Kulanu does. And anybody who finds a role in Kulanu will really find themselves dealing with cutting edge Judaism, um, globalism, uh, what it means to be Jewish and defining yourself in the context of world Jewry, and also pushing the envelope a little because this is, um, uh, somewhat, I mean, I use the word fringe lightly, but um, sort of a, a new thing that people have to get used to. Um, I see hope in this. I, I've um, met with uh, Nachman Shai, who is the Israel minister of the diaspora. And when I asked him, well, what about Jews in Africa? What about Jews in Latin America? He said to me, it's on my list. Now, I thought, wow, that's a win, because five years ago, it wasn't on anybody's list, right? I met with um, Ayelet Shaked, who is the uh, uh, Department of the Interior at, in Israel, and I raised my hand, and I said, well, what about Jews in Africa, right? And she said, I heard there were conversions in Nigeria. I wanted to say, you did? check okay so so the fact is that the more people we involve in this the more you talk about this the more contacts we make uh, the more established this kind of movement becomes um, I am very hopeful for it in the future I mean um, I really do see things the movement happening um, in the over 10 years that I'm involved. 
and um, I want all of you to, to, to run with it. I mean, I'm just a volunteer. That's... So thank you, to, thank you, Bonnie, and thank you to Gail who, who said, this has been very informative. Please put the donate the link in the chat. <laughs> this is supposed to be a fundraiser, Gail reminded us. So the, Molly, thank you for putting it in the chat. It's kulano.org slash give. And it's um, on that page, you can, it's another place you can watch the video again if you want a clearer version of the video. And, it's, and it invites you to make a donation. It shows you the, uh, at the top of the screen um, how much we've raised so far. And this is just how much we've raised. It doesn't count the match, which will double it. Um, so we've raised $2 short of 5,000, which means we'll end up with um, $4 short of 10,000 so far. And we're trying to get up to 20,000 by the end of June, or we might stretch it a little after that. Um, just a couple more things to say for those of you who are enjoying this conversation and want to be um, more want to be more involved in the day-to-day -day conversation we do have a google group um, called kulano talk at googlegroups.com um, you can join it let me see if i can just write this as we speak it's kulano kulano talk i think it's plus subscribe at googlegroups.com. And that puts you on a group, a group of about 250 people who have the possibility of sharing you know, news. Our, um, our most active volunteer on that group is Shep One Known, who reads the press and, and, and has Google alerts coming to him for when there's news about communities we work with, and he, he often posts those on that group, but it's also a place where people can post questions like what's going on in China, or you know, what can we do about something else? Um, and you're welcome to participate. Um, okay, th thank you again, Gail. Um, I think we can move toward closing, although if it, we can hang out here if, if anybody wants to stay longer, but thank you again for everything you all do to donate and to volunteer and to pass the word on to others. Feel free to 